In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove a hot end blob from your 3D printer without causing any damage. Firstly, don't panic. It can be quite easy when you see something go so obviously wrong with a print to immediately start pulling on the melted mess or cutting away parts. This is nowhere near as bad a problem as it looks and if you're careful, you may get away without replacing any parts and be back up and printing within about 10 minutes. So what is this horrible mess you're looking at and how did it happen? What you're most likely looking at here is filament that has been extruded from the nozzle, but instead of being added to the print, it's been forced back up into the outside of the nozzle and the hot end. As this assembly is at a temperature above the melting point of the filament, the filament stays in a semi-liquid state, and when more filament pushes up behind it, it continues to move outwards and upwards to surround the heat block, and in some cases the hot end, the fan, and anything else in its path. This usually happens when a print comes loose from the bed, but instead of being pushed out of the way, it's dragged around the bed by the nozzle. This provides a permanent blockage for the filament, forcing it back up towards the hot bits. The first thing to do when you find this monstrosity is to obviously stop any print that may be running. Then move your hot end carriage up and clear from the bed so that you can get to everything. Then cut away any large parts of a print that are easy to get to. Once you can see how bad the problem is, check to see if the thermistor and heating element are still in place. If either of them are dislodged or have broken wires, then unfortunately you can't use this next quick fix. Instead, you'll have to remove the whole assembly and then either replace it or clear away the melted filament with an alternative heat source. This can be done with something like a heat gun, but I must stress this must never be done whilst attached to the printer as you will cause so much more damage than you're trying to fix. However, in most cases, the components themselves won't be damaged and you can then set your hot end temperature to a figure suitable for the filament you were just using. For PLA, 220 degrees will be plenty, but for anything like PETG, ABS or TPU, you'll need to set the hot end temperature higher. My blob here is with PETG, so I'm setting the hot end to its maximum of 260 degrees. Before we go any further, we also need to remember that jabbing bits of metal into parts of your 3D printer can damage the electrical components. The most sensitive area is where the wires go into the heating element. It is possible to cause a short by touching metal components here, so bear that in mind through the next stage. Let everything warm up for a few minutes, and then find yourself some needle nose pliers, some tweezers, or at the very least some side cutters. Also, find an old piece of cotton rag or cloth. This will get ruined, so make sure it's something you don't want anymore. If possible, remove any cover on your hot end to get better access. Be careful as you do, as it's very possible that some plastic is stuck to fan wiring and pulling on the cover too hard may damage it. The idea is to melt as much of the filament as you can and then very gently pull it away, leaving the hot end components undamaged. Make sure you use tools and not your fingers to pull away any melted filament, as you could easily burn yourself. Bear in mind that once filament cools, that it won't come away from parts like the silicon sock as easily, so pull away what you can while keeping the sock hot so the filament is soft. Once you have the sock removed, quickly clean off any remaining material with the pliers or rag before it cools. You may find it's already been damaged like mine, but this will be usable for a while until some new ones arrive. If you have damaged your silicon sock, there are links below in the description to some of the more common ones so that you can buy a replacement or even some spares, which is a good idea as they're not expensive. Now we have the sock removed, we can get to the rest of the hot end. This volcano style hot end is difficult to access, but other hot ends like the type found on Creality and other printers make this part much easier. You need to gently pull away filament that is hot enough, being especially careful around the wiring. Once the larger parts are removed, it's sometimes best to stop tugging on chunks and instead switch to using the cloth. Cover the end of your pliers or even a small screwdriver with the cloth, and then gently wipe over the filament covered areas. The melted material will stick to the cloth very well, which makes it easy to get all of the little remaining blobs free. The cloth also insulates tools, so risk of electrical damage is reduced. Keep switching to clean areas of the cloth and wiping off filament until you have it all removed. You should now be able to reattach your silicon sock and move on to your next print. If you have any kind of bed probe, then just ensure it's fully working before you move on to something else. You don't want to fall at the last hurdle by ploughing the nozzle into the bed. If you'd like to see how to clean the internals of your hot end, then click here. Or click here for another video you might like. Thanks for watching.